Powell's method. So we will illustrate the method, describe how it works, and then summarize it. Description of the method. So we start the algorithm with some function. We're showing the ISO contours here. And of course, we don't yet know where the overall absolute extrema is, but we're just showing it here for illustration purposes. So step one in the algorithm, we pick a starting point. And we would like the starting point to be as close to the extremum as we can possibly guess. So we pick a starting point and we pick two directions that are different. They can't be parallel. And these two directions we'll call H1 and H2. So given that, we will perform a one-dimensional optimization starting at X0, our starting point, in the direction of H1. And we arrive at a second sort of local extrema, and we call that X1. Now we'll take that second direction, H2, and we perform a second one-dimensional optimization starting at X1 in the direction of H2, and we arrive at another extrema, X2. At this point, we can define a new direction, H3, that's in a direction connecting X0 to X2. And this H3 will be a conjugate direction. That's our first conjugate direction. Now starting at X2, because that's a better guess than X0, so we'll start at X2, we'll perform a one-dimensional optimization along H3 and converge to the local extrema X3. We'll borrow that second direction H2, perform a one-dimensional optimization starting at X3, and we end up at our next local extrema, X4. We will reuse that conjugate direction H3 and perform a one-dimensional optimization starting at X4, and we end up with the next local extrema, X5. Now we'll define a second conjugate direction. We'll call this direction H4, and it's in the direction connecting X3 to X5. It is a second conjugate direction. If our function is exactly quadratic, this will pass exactly through the extrema. If our function is not exactly quadratic, then we'll miss by a little bit. So we perform a one-dimensional optimization along H4, and if this is quadratic, we are guaranteed to converge exactly on the extrema. If it's not exactly quadratic, we got really close, we might have to iterate this a few times. This is an extremely accurate method, and we really only have to iterate this a few times to converge very quickly to a local extremum. Method summary. So here's a, not a block diagram, but step-by-step step of what's happening in Powell's method. So we pick a starting point, hopefully that's close to the extrema, and we pick two starting directions. We don't want H1 and H2 to be the same direction. We'd like them to be different. So we start at X0 and we perform a one-dimensional optimization along H1 to come to a new extrema, X1. Then starting at X1, we will perform a one-dimensional optimization along that direction, H2, to get to the next extremum, which is X2. We calculate a new direction H3 that will be in the direction connecting X0 to X2. This will be a conjugate direction. Starting at X2, we perform a one-dimensional optimization along that conjugate direction H3 to get to the extremum X3. Then starting at X3, we perform a one-dimensional optimization along the direction H2 to get yet another extremum, X4. Then starting at X4, we perform a one-dimensional optimization along that conjugate direction H3 to get the extremum X5. Then we define a second conjugate direction, H4, that's in the direction connecting X3 to X5. Then starting at X5, we perform a one-dimensional optimization along H4 
to get to the extremum, the final extremum, the overall extremum. Now, if that function is a quadratic, we will converge exactly to that extrema because we've done two conjugate directions. Most functions are close to quadratic near their extrema, and this may need to be iterated for things other than quadratics. So we call it quadratically convergent. That makes it extremely efficient. And even if we have to iterate it, it will iterate very quickly in a finite number of iterations. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.